Hey, what's up guys? Sean back with another video and toxic boyfriends and girlfriends. Now, there's a lot of couples on the show. Sometimes people are pretty lonely or they don't have somebody else. But the ones that are on the show, that's probably like one of my favorite parts. That or watching them eat crazy meals or get in the shower and drop the soap, whatever, bust it wide open. I don't know. The camera crew gets a whole lot of stuff on there. But the couples, usually pretty freaking entertaining. And... I tend to like want to watch the episodes that have the couples because there's always some kind of like just craziness going on with it. But I'm definitely down to see a list of crazy toxic couples. So let's check this one out. My 600 pound life showcases a lot of misery. Even though it's entertainment, we forget that these people are real people who are trapped in their own bodies and trapped by their own vices. It's really heavy stuff and I couldn't imagine how I would personally deal with these issues. But I just I mean, I didn't forget they were real people. I was friggin' one of them. I'm still fat, damn it. Especially couldn't imagine dealing with these issues alongside a toxic partner. Relationships can be very messy. People are imperfect, and a lot of the time, people are very, very toxic. Even though a lot of people go through toxic relationships, that doesn't mean they're easy to deal with. Especially you know, I forgot about Lee, and I need to do her too, but I just put up a straw poll in my community, and you guys really want Shanae next. And I really want Shanae too. I remember she was crazy sliding in drumsticks and her coochie and stuff like she was nuts especially if you got other problems and in my signature bond life a lot of toxic relationships are showcased my name is joey and today we're gonna be looking at some of the most toxic partners featured on the show before we get started though make sure to subscribe to plot twist for more content just like this subscribe to me gilbert donovan is perhaps the most hated partner ever showcased on my signature bond life why well i think the biggest flaw of gilbert's is that he's actually and would you look at how upset he is? She must have ate the last piece of cheesecake. Actually incredibly unfaithful. After his wife called him while she was at the hospital, he mistook her for another woman and basically outed himself as a cheater. Oh, his wife was not idiot. happy about this and Gilbert's reaction to her unhappiness was pretty manipulative. He made it seem like she was the one with bad attitude and that she was going too hard on him. Gilbert also wanted to be intimate with- Yeah, I just friggin' answered the phone, thought you were some other chick, and how is she being- What? What stupid, like, mental gymnastics is that? Buddy's out here slipping around, dipping and diving on every 600-pounder he can find, and she's being too... Whatever, Gilbert. ...with his wife after she had surgery and wasn't in the best shape to perform such tasks. He kind of pressured her into doing things anyways, what? which is just plain disgusting. There's a lot more that could be said about Gilbert, but thankfully he isn't in the picture anymore. However, he later hooked up with another patient from the show, Karina, so I think it's safe to say he has a type. I told you, man, he likes them big. It ain't, I mean, thick thighs save lives and all, but 600 pound thighs crush balls. And that ain't no thick thighs, nothing. But he's he got on with another one? Man, I gotta see that episode too. I'm getting behind watching these lists, guys. I can't keep track of all the ones I gotta do. You're saying that you're in love with me, you don't wanna leave me and all this stuff, but you wanna separate. You can give me one more chance, though. That's all I ask. 10 years of 10 years of me taking care of you. Give oh, shut You manipulative little worm. Come on. Like, I took care of you. I this, I that, and? That's that's yesterday. What you done for me lately? That's where I'm at. I'm petty with it. But Buddy's cheating on her, whatever. Like, she can't get up and chase him out the house. So she's just got to sit there and take it? Like, it's, it's huge manipulative tactics. It's sick. And to make the beast with two backs after she just had surgery. That's gross, man. Like, why? She's clearly in pain. How could you even be turned on in that moment? Nancy, what are you doing on your phone? I'm gonna have to go on there and find out myself. There's all kinds of chicks. Sometimes I feel like I'm out looking for affection sometimes because I don't get it from you. I know I lied, but 10 years together, I've been by her for all that time taking care of her and never would expect it to get to this. I'm in a hotel right now because I have left Gilbert. I'm Good done with his cheating, his drinking, and his abuse. And finding out he was still contacting other women online was the final straw for me. As much as it hurts me, and I have to stand strong. I mean, she was with him all that time. Even if he sucked as a human being, it's probably going to hurt. It always hurts to break up with somebody. But that dude sucks. You could do way better than that. Especially not you drop some weight. You could get out here and get rid of his little mighty mouse looking ass. Just because he takes care of me, he wipes my ass, whatever he does, <laughs> it doesn't mean that I have to put up with no, what I put up don't. with. I'm sorry. I'm not yes, going to do this anymore. 
The next toxic partner on this list is Lee. Lee made his debut on My Sister's Bond Life in the episode titled Lee and Rena's Story. Lee and Rena's relationship isn't one built on a great foundation as they both met at a weight loss clinic. That's basically like two drug addicts. Well, that's a recipe for disaster. Both of you are going to fight over the bag of Oreos, those chips. That ain't going too far between two 600 pounders. You might need to get two of them Doritos bags, I'm just saying. It's meeting at rehab, and that never ends well. Throughout the episode, Lee has shown us that he has a pretty bad anger issue. And while his anger issues don't necessarily equal abuse, Lee has shown no motive to help himself. He also comes across as jealous, even getting jealous of Rena's brother at one point, which is just straight up weird. The couple broke up after Lee allegedly cheated on Rena. He got jealous of her brother? This ain't no Alabama stuff, is it? Are they out here kissing cousins? That's crazy. Lee's, look, I need to watch Lee's. Damn, I'm getting behind more and more watching these guys. However, as of 2019, they're apparently back together. So let's hope Lee changed for the better. So me and my Hi. older brother, Michael, decided to check into a weight loss clinic. He was using food to cope all these years too. And that's where I met Lee. I remember meeting Renee for the first time. Her brother was my roommate at the bariatric clinic, and I kind of felt jealous how she would make sure he had what he needed. So Jealous she was taking care of her brother? So you slid right up in there, huh, Lee? You sneaky little dog, you. But how'd he sneak out of the room in the wheelchair? It would've, you would have heard him coming. I don't know, man. But the beauty about weight issues is it goes over all boundaries. The chub does not discriminate. I talked to so many people from 70 to 17 to whatever. I mean, women, guys, everybody, everybody has weight issues. And that's just, I guess, where you could meet people. He was in a friggin' weight clinic. He dealt with, like, he made the best of a situation. So then I got to where I'd follow her around and we were like Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> and then we were an item at the clinic, but that broke the rules there. So we either Damn. had to stop dating or leave. They would get onto us for holding. You found a way to get out of the fat boy clinic by dating? That's a jail hack right there. That's how you get out. And also, man, this guy's fucking yiddies are huge. Hands. They would get onto us for showing any kind of emotion or attention to each other. We loved each other, and we've stayed together over the past. Why does he look like he's taking a crap? That's a smile? You better run, buddy's turtling right now. 11 years since leaving the clinic. But being together with both of us struggling with food has not been a good thing. The only reason we're even able to survive right now is because Lee's sister comes over every day and helps us. So you tri you're, you were helping your brother and then somehow ended up with his sis. Keep it in the family, I guess. Up next is Gareth, who is the husband to Zaylin, and he's definitely not the most supportive husband. Gareth isn't She's particularly pretty. keen on his wife losing weight, and there's a pretty silly reason for that. Gareth has a fetish for bigger women. In fact, that's the reason he got with his wife in the first place, because she was so big. But I guess to Gareth, bigger means better, and he expressed disappointment when his wife was considering surgery. If you do- I mean, if she wanted to better herself and whatever, and you just like the jiggle, I mean, whatever, that's what you're into. I'm not kink shaming, but you can go have sex with some warm jello for all I care. Let her get healthy. You have a preference for women. I can't fault you for that, but there's got to be some sort of line, right? You can't be disappointed in your partner for wanting to stay alive for you and your child. There's more to this than just personal gratification, right. though, and it feels like Gareth didn't fully understand that, making him look horrifically selfish. It's really hard to talk about Gareth because, you know, he, he wants... A fat wife. He has a physical preference for his sexual needs. Oh, no kidding. I mean, he's a chubby chaser. Honey bun humper, Oreo orgasm, Twizzler, twin, uh, Kindle, uh, whatever, man. He likes big girls. But this, there's like no point to not let her get healthy. That's stupid. You have a kid together. You're going to be a like single dad or a widowed dad, whatever, if she passes away. So let her work on her. It's stupid. That requires me to be bigger than, you know, just fat. Big can't be beautiful when it means my daughter may not have a mother. He has no idea how close to death I feel every day. Without this surgery, I'm gonna die sooner rather than later. He talks about, it's not that he will not be sexually attracted to me, it's that I'll be repulsive. 
What? If you're not 500 plus, you're repulsive to that guy? He's got some weird issues he's got to work through. But when you're 600 pounds, man, it feels like you could round the corner, slip, fall, and you're just done right there. Like, it's right around the corner always. So I get what she's saying. She's definitely in the right mindset where she has to do something for her daughter. But the fact that he doesn't want her to just because he's turned on by all that is kind of sickening. Yeah. I mean, I'm a little bit sad because, you know, you know, I like bigger women, so... A little upsetting to to lose what you like. The next toxic partner is Lisa Eberson, who appears. Oh Christ, I remember her. But last buddy, cut a hole in a beanbag chair and had go to town, man. In a very recent episode of the show, Lisa is completely bedbound and reliant on her husband Randy, who isn't in great shape himself. Randy does everything for Lisa. He cooks for her, he cleans for her, and even helps her go to the bathroom. This is a lot of work for a man in his 60s, and Lisa is no easy person to work with. It seems over the years, Lisa has completely. Damn, how many bags of chips did you need? Man, her, Lisa, I think her last name's Eberson or whatever. She's on my list. Trust me, she's coming. Because I want to see this demonic huzzy. I, I got to see the full episode. Worn him down to the point where he would do anything for her. Even if it means sacrificing his own health and happiness. Some may consider Randy to be an enabler as the meals he cooks for Lisa aren't really on the healthy side. But I would argue that he has no choice but to do exactly what she wants. Look at her sucking the meat off that bone, Randy. That why you got... <laughs> I'm playing. <laughs> Lisa practically worked her husband to death. There was one moment in the episode where Randy was having chest pains and Lisa talked him out of going to the hospital. Unsurprisingly, these chest pains were a symptom of something more severe that had yet to come and Randy oh, died of a heart attack not too long after. Too much Viagra will do that. No, I'm playing. But, man, that's so sad that he's having chest pains and you won't let him call the doctor because that probably means you'd have to skip fifth meal. Ooh, ooh, this lady, man. I didn't realize she was that bad. Like, I didn't know he actually passed away. I thought she just didn't want him to get help. Ew. Randy quite obviously needed to go to the hospital to see what it was going on, but it's obvious Lisa didn't care enough and wanted Randy to stay and serve her. Pretty disgusting, if you ask me. What said me about Lisa is her personality. She was fun and beautiful. I love everything about Lisa. I oh, used to go to the park and she'd hold her on the back of her wheelchair and she'd walk around on that. Oh yeah, she's saying it seems like just a peach. Don't get medical help. She's such a beautiful soul, though. What? In what universe, buddy? Uh, you could do way better, man. Go to bingo, find you some nice bingo wing ladies. You, you'll definitely get a better one than her. And she might even put sheets on the bed. We used to go fishing all the time. She'd go to the store with me. She'd go to the doctors with me. My boyfriend Randy has to do a lot for me. I feel bad because it's not fair to him. He shouldn't have to come home and clean, and he shouldn't have to come home and cook, and he shouldn't have to take care of me. Randy takes really good care of Lisa. He's here for her, and he helps her. He baths her, helps her with her. Is she really just sitting there eating a bag of shredded cheese while she's laying in her own filth? It's not like she's ever washing her hands, so this lady's out here. Ew. And then she's dunking her hand in the cheese, and you're probably eating. Ew. Ew. Her blisters on her legs and stuff. I feel like her caretaker and her boyfriend some of the times. It's kind of frustrating. I personally feel bad including Michael on this list because I don't think he's abusive or even that toxic, especially compared to the other people on here. However, there is something off about his relationship with his wife, Kimberly. It feels like they're both very emotional people and not afraid to express themselves, which in a lot of ways is a very good thing. But I feel like Michael can be very overbearing with his emotions as well as being incredibly pessimistic. Bro, do you want any pasta with that Parmesan? Holy hell. And what is that? Little bits of, uh, what is it? Salami cut up or something? I didn't think he was that bad, but being able to share your emotions with your partner is not a bad thing. If you can talk to each other, that's great. I'm not saying he doesn't have a right to feel these things, but it seems like he's constantly seeking reassurance and that can be emotionally taxing within a relationship. Kimberly seems like she's walking on thin ice with him often, constantly asking if she's disturbing him simply by being in the same room as him. One scene that was slightly hard to watch was when Michael wrote a letter to his abuser, went outside, read it to Kimberly, and then burned it. I understand. But isn't that like a practice in just letting go of things? I don't think that's a bad thing. 
I thought you were supposed to burn it, right? I understand the symbolic nature of doing something like this, but I can't deny that something about it felt very over the top. Almost like Michael and Kimberly were playing it up for the camera. Again, I'm not trying to compare Michael to some of the other monsters on this list, but he and his wife have a very strange dynamic on camera, and it's kind of hard to ignore. But what do you mean they're playing it up for the camera? I absolutely cannot agree with that. I mean, he was holding on to something from his past, and he was letting it go. There's a camera in your face catching all your vulnerable moments with my 600 pound life. So I could see how that would be, you know, tough to like portray on camera. It would be very hard to go through all those like I was abused, I was this, I was that on camera for the whole world to see. I don't know how they do it, man, because I thought about calling for like a split second. Then I was like, nope, can't do that. But it would have been an epic fail for sure. I would have had a good old time on that show. But alright guys. Toxic boyfriends and girlfriends. So I think I have to do Shanae's next. That's the one you guys really want. But I'm definitely coming for Lee and all them too. So alright guys. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see y'all later. Bye.